Hello, hello, and welcome to day 15 of this Unity development uh, blog for a new Unity game. Um, I am working on this RPG, uh, codenamed, or sort of rough title, Era. And uh, today I spent a lot of time thinking about um, the document I created yesterday and what would be uh, the major part of that entire game, like the defining uh, mechanic that needs to really be... Uh, you know, done properly, had the time put into it. And obviously I've been working on it already and it's the uh, narrative, dialogue, cutscene system. Okay, now I'm rolling this out from scratch. I've already started, I already started it last week and I've been, uh, you've seen it in the videos. And I spent today, um, you know, I ripped it apart and decided I was going to rewrite the whole thing. And early in the day, I got, I've been on this kick for this MVC, like model view controller stuff, and I thought, uh, I started writing this uh, component, and I didn't like how it was working out, and I thought, this MVC isn't being done properly, so I went and did a lot of research on proper MVC with C Sharp, and then I started writing the code to meet that paradigm. That was getting far too complicated, and I started to, and I decided, let's just take a step back here, and this is getting ridiculous. Uh, the majority of games, from what I did research on today, aren't really coded in MVC pattern. That's more of an enterprise and web app and all that kind of stuff, those types of software. Um, it makes a lot of sense for that. The problem with games is games, the data and the view are so tightly coupled together that... Um, it's very, very important that the view know some of the data. Like it's just, it's a lot easier to uh, optimize that way as far as I could read. There are systems out there for doing MVC, no doubt about it. Um, but as I was starting to implement it, it was becoming quite a, a, like quite large, the, um, the code base. So I thought this is gonna take too long, especially for a prototype, it's sort of ridiculous. So another funny thing I read today was that programmers like building really nice looking systems like of code and in a game it doesn't make sense what you end up doing is just keep making the code better 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 so it can do more things and it can fit all these different scenarios and it's just it's an amazing piece of code that the end user can't see like the game doesn't really get affected by it as much and then you end up having a massive code base and you don't ship a prototype so I decided, look at that, this is sort of going bad for me, so I decided not to do that. And I um, I went back to um, my basic MVC structure that I had been working on already. And I decided um, I'll label it as controllers, models, and views, because I understand, my brain sort of understands what those things are. But I'm not going to decouple them uh, like a normal model view controller. I'm going to have them so that they can talk to whoever um, they want. And one thing I'm doing is the model in the view for at least the cutscene uh, part that I'm doing, this is sort of how it's working. The model in the view, um, uh, let's just jump into here for a quick second. So here's the controller, the model, and the view. So the model and the view I'm doing as static classes. Um, because I feel like if we just take this cutscene as an example, if I have this cutscene and I have, uh, I'm only going to ever be playing with one cutscene at a time in the game. I won't have two cutscenes running at once. It wouldn't make any sense. So I don't need to keep track of two sets of data for the cutscene. I only need to keep track of one set of data. So I made the data a static uh, class. So I can just feed in whatever the data is at the time because the data is actually coming from a database asset. So I just grab the database asset that I want, shove it into this model, and it populates all the parameters, and then I use it. Same with the view. The view, there's only one cutscene view showing at any particular time. And in this case, the view's in charge of how the camera works. And I believe that's about it. So I have, let's see here, camera, 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 showing and hiding the dialogue, um, updating the dialogue text, um, updating the choice buttons, which I actually I forgot I wanted to do that today, but I didn't get to it. Um, zooming the camera, and the new thing I haven't showed you guys yet is panning the camera. So um, all that stuff is controlled by the view, because that, that's very uh, specific view-related things, like showing text, uh, how the camera works and stuff. The model keeps track of all the information, like how fast should the camera move, where should it zoom to, 
um, what the text should be, like a, a list of all the different types of text and all that kind of stuff. So that's the model. And I just need one of each of those. So those are static. The controller is going to be um, not a static. It's just going to be you stick the controller on whatever object you want to be um, a cutscene. Um, so that's sort of my philosophy behind that. So there's going to be a ton of controllers out there. Controllers are being stuck on all these game objects. But they all read one model and one view. Because at any one time in the game, there's only going to be one set of data for a cutscene and one set of view data for the cutscene. So it makes sense to do it that way. So I'm going to try this sort of relationship. The one thing, the reason I was having trouble is I wanted to be able to access information from the view for the camera. I want to keep track of a lot of the camera data, uh, like the numbers, in the model. And I want the view to manipulate the camera, but I want to be able to grab data from the model. Uh, I, I had a system going where I was going through the controller, uh, or the controller was controlling everything and just telling the two things what to do. And it became very, it, was, it didn't make sense. It was sort of like, why am I doing this? So. One reason why you would want to do it is testing reasons, um, but majority of games don't uh, do the MVC pattern for the testing as well as for the reason like the decoupling of the view. Uh, there's no need for that in games, so as much anyways, especially this game, so that's why I'm not doing that. Anyways, this has gotten to be a lot more of a conversation than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but anyways, let's go back to here and look, take a look at this list. I have cutscenes, narrative, and dialogue. What I've decided to do to make the game a little bit more manageable, but still a massive feature, is stick these things all together. So uh, cutscenes, uh, narrative, and dialogue, that's all one system. Everything I'm going to classify as a cutscene, meaning uh, you go up and talk to somebody, that's going to be a cutscene. It's going to be, because it's so important, the dialogue in this game is so important, and it, draw, it drives the story that every, every piece of dialogue is, is a cutscene. It's important, right? And I'm not using cutscene like a typical way, I don't think, where the whole game stops and it goes to like an animation or some sort of a film or a video. I'm not going to do that. I'm just, I'm just calling a cutscene where like the player stops having control for, the, uh, for a moment. We take over control and do something for a bit with dialogue or moving the camera or moving actors. And then we give them back controller. And every time they talk to anyone, that's what it's going to be, whether it just be one line of text and they just can't move to a whole conversation. So that's going to be the, the bulk of that uh, system. So there we go. I just condensed that. Um, relationship management, I started building that into the cutscene stuff today so that uh, the cutscene and the dialogue uh, changes depending on the, on the relationship of the two people talking. So that's already built in, or at least started. Um, quests are sort of built into the dialogue. The dialogue will base the, what the person is saying on quest information. I had that started already into the thing, um, and that's about it. So I'm just going to dive in and show you, show you the game so far. Not really anything's changed here. There's a couple, you'll see the camera movement, but it's mainly I'm accessing the text completely different, but there's no way of you seeing that in the game, which is sort of a good thing. Uh, you want it to be seamless. So, um, yeah, I am going to build out tomorrow a little test scenario with a few different characters, whether they just be uh, like colored blocks on the screen that I can go up and interact with in a particular way that that um, shows off the features of this dialogue system. So that's what I'm going to work on tomorrow since I got all this stuff done today, which was mainly rewriting the entire system to be much more complicated than it was before. So. I'm just going to go up here, we'll walk, we have the zoom in, Hi, hello my name is Rem. Now I'm going to hit the action key and what you'll see is the camera is actually going to move to a different location. right? Then it says look at the sand dune, I hit action key again, it moves back and it says uh, we'll talk to you later and done. So I've added that ability for the camera to move wherever I want. So if the character is talking about sp something specific like, oh, you have to go to this specific tree, I can move the camera over and show the user the tree, bring the camera back and continue on with the conversation. Uh, that's all built in, and it's on a per uh, dialogue line, uh, so it's not the entire cutscene. It's like every line can have its own zoom level and its own location on the map, so it can move around and zoom in and out really quite nicely. Uh, I've also built out the um, database, so the cutscene database here. Uh, well, that's not it. Uh, we'll go here. Okay, so 
this cutscene database, I'll just show you one thing right now. Um, I have it so when it when it creates its uh, whoops. Anyhow, there's uh, this is the the cutscene database asset. Uh, so what we have here is some text um, areas here. Instead of actually just having one text line, I have a whole bunch of different options that can be put into here. I'm going to build out, hopefully, an inspector that is a little bit more customized for this. I do have my editor here, but I'm not sure which direction I'm going to go, either the editor way or just a custom inspector. I'm going to look into that tomorrow. So I have uh, different relationship statuses. I only have three in here now, ally, neutral, and foe. There's also the ability to have, um, let's see here, Relationship sta uh, uh, states, a family, friends, ally, foe, neutral. So that's sort of the different types of relationships uh, the character can have with different other NPCs. So we have like if you if you are an ally, we have um, like the default text, which is what I'm reading off of now. Hello, my name is Rem. We also have things um, in here like. Uh, required items. If if this particular character wants an item, you can select something from the items list. How many items that person uh, is looking for, and then you have some text options for if you have that many items or you don't have that many items or just default text. So just different options for the text for that one character's dialogue. I also have the same thing for neutral text and faux text, so I can really customize how that character reacts to the main player. Uh, based on many different things, whether it be your current inventory status or your um, relationship to that character. So that's already built in, ready to go. I just need to fill in some text. I'm going to build out a little scenario tomorrow to test that and maybe work on some inspector stuff tomorrow. And I really want to start ironing out the kinks of this system. I'm not going to get it perfect, but enough that I can do a minimum viable product, like a tiny little game, one level, basic stuff, fully packaged and uh, able to play. I want to get that going in the next couple of weeks. So this system is a major uh, part of that um, that uh, minimal viable product because it's going to be the, the core mechanic of the entire game for the whole story. So I have to get it right in this minimal viable product, the MVP, to see if it all just works and it's playable and it's fun to do. So, yeah, anyways, another long video. I want this to be like a two-minute video, but I'm just rambling on. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you want to follow along with the game development here. Lots of hurdles, lots of testing, lots of learning. So it's a fun experiment and fun project. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.